welcome to Talk To Me Tuesday. I'm your host, Tasha, the Mindset Coach. So tonight we're talking about investing, but I want to call it investing out the box. So not your typical ways that we may think of on how to invest and utilize our money as a tool like we should. All right, because we all know at this point, it's better to invest than to save. So I have two lovely ladies here with me tonight to talk about the ways that they invest out the box and share with everyone here so that we can learn how to get involved and start investing. Um, so go ahead, Tamaya, introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Tavana Evans, and I'm the founder of WalkCoin. And Tiffany? Hello, everyone. My name is Tiffany Tayus, and I am the owner of the Taxel Group, the Taxel Locator, and I am the Taxel Expert. Well, thank you. And I'm so glad to have you ladies here with me tonight. So as we get into this conversation, we're going to jump right in. Uh, when you hear about the topic investing out the box, tell me what it is you think about that. Because my, my original point of saying it, right, is because we as a culture, right, is what this show is for, thinks about investing. And sometimes it's only employer related. So we think about 401ks. Um, IRAs, but not using our own money to invest for ourselves. And so, of course, my business is investing on a budget, utilizing your money to get into the stock market, but not just buying long term. That's great as well. But option trading is something that we focus on heavy, as well as dividends, swing trading, and things of that nature. So, let's talk about what is it you all do to invest out the box. Well, as far as myself, um, I invest in tax liens and tax deeds, um, and that would be purchasing the debt that belongs to real estate. And that debt is a byproduct of the property taxes, delinquent property taxes that your city and or your county will sell of a property owners because of the fact they are not paying property taxes. They cannot receive the revenue in order for their city or their county to operate sufficiently. Okay. And how about you, Tavani? Well, um, I invest in, I, I guess you could say more so, e even though I am a crypto person, I, I'm, I'm more of an investor in tech companies because I, I in, invest in companies and I build companies. Um, I am the founder of a cryptocurrency. I do uh, partake in many cryptos actually um, and especially in the past but um, more so now uh, uh, the focus of my investment of course is in, in in my own companies and growing my own companies and then what's the name of that coin that you said that you uh, I'm the founder of Wapcoin it's a cryptocurrency that I created back in 2017 and I say, so I'm the founder. I'm not, it's not my coin <laughs> because it's a decentralized crypto now. So it belongs to the community. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's what I, I, I'm involved in. Okay. And so let me ask this, since I said it's out the box, right? How did you all learn about each of the things you're doing now? And then how did you get started once you learned? Well, um, the way I got started is, um, Currently, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, but I lived in several different states. And um, a friend, a coworker of mine, introduced me to Realtor.com, where they were actually selling properties in Michigan for like a hundred dollars. And I went to the site, and I, I really didn't believe it at first. I was like, whatever. But it stuck in the back of my head to where I stayed on the site, site continued researching those properties. And I started calling some of the agents. And once I finally got someone on the phone, they stated that, yeah, the properties cost $100. Um, they may be damaged in some sort of way, but that's when I, my very first purchase of real estate without a mortgage was $100 houses in Detroit. And from that point, the agent that I was working with mentioned tax sales. And once I started purchasing at tax sales and my first purchase was $1,600, I've been purchasing real estate in the form of investing in tax leads and tax deeds since then. I Honestly, I've never owned a piece of real estate that had debt attached to it. And I own quite a few properties. And can you tell us about the recent um, when you had, I know about 
uh, a couple properties you buy on Indiana. And I just want people to know about when we say out the box, how much did you spend on the properties that you attained through that online sale? Well, I purchased three properties on the online tax sale out of, it was St. Joseph, Indiana. In St. Joseph, I got three lots of land. They were all next to each other. And um, I paid a total of $81 for all three lots right next to each other. And the properties in that area, it is a, um, it's not um, an affluent side of town. So the properties that's right across the street from those lots are averaging from 80 to $100,000. But I was able to purchase those properties all together for $81. So one was 26, the other one was 26, the other one was like 27. And um, other than the actual attorney fees, it costs more for my attorney to put the deed into my name than it costs for me to actually purchase the properties. Now, in Indiana, it's a 120 day redemption period. So the property owner has 120 days to redeem from me, but all their back taxes were still due. So they're not likely to come to redeem from me. And once I actually get the property into my name, all the back taxes are null and void. All liens that's on the property is null and void and the property is free and clear in my name. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And then the whole point, again, if people aren't hearing, is investing out the box, meaning she is buying properties, land, residential spaces, commercial, with things that have no mortgage attached to them. All right? Again, sometimes we may only know, especially me, when before I met you guys, right, in the clubhouse group, I had never even known about tax liens and tax deeds. And I only thought you could buy a house or a piece of land one way, right? You see it for sale sign and you pay what that price is or you negotiate down, but never could I thought you could own something for as little as $81. As a matter of fact, that was three things. So I just hope people are understanding how powerful this information is and how we can get involved and start using the money we make, especially my people that listen, because in my group, I always talk about investing on a budget, meaning all, take all your coins, right? Go get your change out your jar, put it in the little thing at the bank, right? Get your dollars out because I bet you had $81 in that can and you could have been buying properties with Tiffany, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. these are the things we need to talk about. So Tavania, tell us about you know, how you got started and then how you even learned about these things as far as tech companies and how you could actually invest in them being an individual person and not a company yourself. And then spending that all the way to now, putting your things into the metaverse to even become more lucrative. Well, I, I got introduced, of course, to crypto years ago. Um, Bitcoin started. Um, and I was introduced by a friend of mine who approached me from the perspective, you need to be doing this because he, he knows that I'm that type of person. Mm -hmm. um, and initially, I, I, he, I don't think a lot of people were able to explain it to anybody because still nowadays people have a difficulty explaining it. So he didn't really explain it to me in a way where it caught on, where it was like, yeah, I really need to be doing this. And then flash, uh, fast forward to 2014, when I started my first company, Safe to Meet, and I was out trying to raise capital for that company, that's when I came into the realization that these cryptos that are out now, like these blockchains are actually raising money and raising capital. And, and that's when it became more intriguing to me because I was like, oh, wow. Um, you know, Black women, of course, traditionally raise less than 1% of VC capital. So I'm like, okay, so this is a way where we can create our own capital for our own businesses. Okay, bet, this is what we need to do. And that's when I inevitably created um, Develop Guapcoin. Um, now, while creating and Develop Guapcoin, anybody that's involved in crypto, you're dealing with all different types of crypto. So at that point, you're getting Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, Guapcoin, et cetera, because you're now in a crypto ecosphere, uh, ecosphere. And when you're in the crypto ecosphere, that's, that's what you, you, crypto becomes money to you, right? Mm -hmm. So I um, actually began to operate and live off of crypto from, you know, way back when, you know, so it became a normal thing to me. And that's when I realized that one day crypto is going to become a normal thing to everyone. And um, the, the sad thing about crypto is that um, usually with crypto, people who are first to market are the ones that benefit the, the greatest, right? So now 
you know, you have with black and brown folks, we're typically not first to market on anything. So it's something that we get involved and it's already been, you know, kind of like really, really, really like capitalized on, on that level, right? But the beautiful thing about creating our own and Guapcoin is that it saves a place for people who are just now coming aboard on crypto. Um, it's safe, you know, it's been there for years now. We've been there since 2017. We're decentralized means that no one of us owns it. You can't just decide to turn it off and or pull the rug or whatever, because it now belongs to the community. So we've created something that's a safe sandbox for people to get involved in crypto and gain and gain an understanding of what crypto is from the ground up, where it's most powerful, especially for us. Okay. So if you had to explain in the basic terms, right, like Tiffany was saying on, uh, you know, a tax lien, a tax deed, and I'm going to go back to Tiffany so she can explain exactly what that means again. But if you could explain what it is to have crypto, right, or enter into that metaverse, what does that mean so people in our what? culture that get left behind, right, on the information yeah. is because we're fearful of what we don't know. And maybe yeah. we won't always have the full understanding, right? But at the mm -hmm. same time, I challenge us because we not we might not necessarily know what's going on with the money. That's our money that's being handled by people at Vanguard or at um, what's another one, Fidelity or JP Morgan, right? That are in charge of our 401ks and we're not asking those questions. So now we have this platform to ask these questions so people could finally kind of get a basic understanding of, okay, what does it mean if I own crypto? Because I know what it means if I own a Nike share, right? Or if I own a fraction of Apple or something like that. Can you tell them on a small level what that means? Well, crypto is like getting involved in the early creation of money because crypto is money, digital currency, virtual currency. It's money, right? So is if you can imagine if you were around to have gotten involved with uh, uh, the dollar in, in its infant stages, then that's what you're doing when you're getting involved in crypto. You're getting involved in the creation of money from the ground up in its infant stages, right? Um, and not only just money, the dollar is money that is officiated by a government. It's centralized money, meaning that there are centralized um, offici uh, government officials that issue this money and control this money. But crypto is not issued by the government. It's not issued by central authorities. It's software distributed. So um, it, it kind of differentiates your, uh, yourselves from how money is controlled and manipulated. And it's more geared towards the people. Um, so it's a whole different beast in that way. But it's a it's very similar to money in, in the way that we use it because crypto is able to be used, is able to be spent, is able to be accepted. Um, it's widely recognized as legal tender all over the world and, and that's growing. You know, they have countries now that are accepting crypto as legal tender. Um, mm -hmm. and it's um, totally empowering them because they 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 these countries out there, they tend to have legal tender that is a, of low value and um you know for the people so well, but one of the beautiful things is it gives us uh black and brown people as an opportunity to have our own legal tender that can link us through borderless uh transactions mm -hmm. so we, we could begin doing business with people way across the water with our own currency uh, with no border, with no, 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 ha without having to go through a government. Some of us who are used to doing international business and money, we, we do business like say with Nigeria or whatever the case may be. It's been really sketchy. It's been very expensive. Um, it's not very fast. Um, and you have to deal with a lot of red tape. But with crypto, it's just a matter of sending from one wallet to the next. It's from peer to peer, person to person. There's no bank in between there. There's no country dictating how your money gets sent. I like that. And I think that's very clear. I mean, I could follow because at first I was a person, even though heavy in the stock game, right, in the investing, I was like, nah, we don't know anything about crypto. Don't say Taj told you, but I could point you <laughs> to Divine over here to help you out. The same thing I would do with, you know, the tax liens and tax deeds as I let uh, Tiffany break down in just a second, because 
you know, I get in the phase of talking to our people and challenging them on trying something they don't know. Just listen. Go and tap into a room. Go get, um, you know, in a clubhouse or literally get in the room on some of your presentations that both of you do, right? Yeah. Because this is how you start. You have to learn in order to start. And then you go ahead and start really getting active where you go into a sale with Tiffany or you going down with you and listening when you're breaking down what point or even tell them how to get started. And the coin isn't even a lot, people, where you can start investing, again, my people on a budget immediately. And she's going to tell you about the pricing for it because this is serious. This is a new wave of where the world is going. And Tiffany talks all the time about... Um, they not making more land, right? <laughs> Last They're week, not. and America looked like it's for sale the way Tiffany got properties and everything <laughs> up under her belt. And yeah. so we need to get involved. You need to learn. And what I can do is show you how to get more of the money, right? So that you can then put it into the cryptocurrency world, that you can put it into tax lien and tax deeds. And this is how this cycle gets built with us working together, sharing information and, and you know, and making the money and building things that we want for ourselves so that we're not so dependent upon other cultures and other revenue streams and other jobs. You mm -hmm. can do it yourself. If you knew that you could buy properties for $81 and cheaper people, we've yeah. seen it, right? She told you one of them was 26. So Tiffany, real quick, just let the people know um, exactly what it means again to own a tax lien or a tax deed. Okay, so basically it starts with your property taxes. Everyone who owns real estate pays property taxes. Actually, everyone who actually rents real estate, they pay property taxes as well. It's just um, put within their payments that they're making monthly payments every month to the landlord, but it's all property taxes. Property taxes covers your street cleaning, your street maintenance, um, your hospitals, your police services, fire services, school, parks and recreation, all of that good stuff, right? But in order for your city to have those services available to you, you have to pay those property taxes. Now, even with business owners, they pay property taxes. Personal property taxes is for businesses and real estate property taxes is for um, single family residential property. So when you are delinquent on your property taxes and it has to be very delinquent once it goes past a certain stage, depending on the state that you reside in, it's going to, they're going to file a lien against it. And that means that they're putting it on public notice that your property taxes have not been paid. Now, some states will tax something to your door. Other states will put a sign in your yard, you know, just to put it on public notice. But depending on the state that you live, they're either going to sell a tax lien or a tax deed. It's either going to be redeemable or not redeemable. And you can get interest on it if it is redeemable, right? And each state has different um, interest amounts that the investor or the the individuals that come to purchase your tax lien or tax deeds, they will get that interest plus the money they paid if you have the opportunity to redeem. So a tax lien is a debt. So some states only sell tax liens and the lien is, is, is several things. In addition to a tax lien, which is your delinquent property taxes, you also have a mortgage. Your mortgage is a lien. Your HOA fees, if you do not pay that, that's a lien. If you get a mortgage, if you get uh, work done onto your property and you don't pay the mechanic, the um, contractor that does the work, that's a mechanic's lien. And they also have IRS and state liens as well. But your tax lien is going to supersede every lien that you have on your property, which means with that being superseded, once you purchase a property with the tax lien on it, once you purchase that lien itself, everything else becomes null and void depending on the state. You understand? Same thing with a tax deed. A tax deed is the actual deed to your property. In some states like California, you can't get it back once you actually purchase the highest bidder receives that tax deed. It's their property. But if you're in somewhere like Georgia or Alabama, Alabama, you have three years to redeem. Georgia is a year and a day to redeem. So it all depends on your specific state. But at the end of the day, you're either going to lose your property or you're going to actually pay more money. And if you're an investor, you're either going to win real estate or you're going to make more money. Whether you in the all is determined on if you're purchasing a lien or a deed. 
So you basically saying either way, what my ears are hearing is a win-win. Correct. That's right. So either you get money off the entrance, right? Once mm-hmm. they come and redeem, if they redeem, or you're going to walk away with the property, land, or commercial piece that you decided to bid on. Correct. correct. Very correct. Okay. Okay, so I don't know about you all that's listening, but I'm hearing win-win on both sides. And what I want, lastly, to wrap this up, ladies, is talk to us specifically as a culture, as women, as a people. Why is it important that we learn about these ways of investing outside of the box? I mean, especially for us, because I already know, Tavon, you brought up that we're always last to everything, right? And this is because we don't usually share as we're going in the process. We wait till we get way up here to tell people about the journey all of a sudden. No, mm-hmm. take us along with you. And I know for a fact, as I've been following both of you, that you do take people along the journey. But those that are willing to start, right, willing to get active and, you know, just start learning on what you don't know. So please tell a person, if they were talking to you directly, why they need to Take your hand and learn about Guacoin, learn about the tax sale group. So, Tanya, you go ahead and lead us off. Well, these things are how generational wealth are created, and that's something that we don't have. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we, so we're finally kind of catching up. And as we are able to create gener- generational wealth, we reduce poverty, we close the poverty gap, um, we do a lot of things. And we're coming to a critical junction in time where, you know, I, again, we could be facing another recession and, and um, we are facing inflation. Mm-hmm. A lot of the different things are happening. So some people get uh, scared when they see these things, but other people who are savvy and money understand that this is an opportunity, a golden opportunity to change your whole entire financial profile by acting now while things are volatile. Um, a lot of these markets, they really, really feed off of volatility. And, and then once it settles down, then you know this, it, it just becomes a thing. It just becomes what we're doing. Like cryptocurrency would just become another currency that we are using um, that we're all moving towards away from the dollar. But we can still capitalize off the volatility right now to accumulate and to 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 accumulate these things and build a profile that when every, when things settle down, we're already owners mm-hmm. um, and, 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 and we're stakeholders in these these things. Absolutely. And before you go, Tiff, Tavaya, please let them know how much would they have to invest to own one walk point so they know oh. exactly what oh. it takes. Well, currently right now on one of the exchanges that we're on ProBit, it's fluctuating between a penny to two pennies. But you have to also understand at least over a decade ago, that's where that's where Bitcoin was, (laughs) you know, exactly. So you have an opportunity to take, you know, a very small amount of money and accumulate some guap coin and get in, involved in the whole community. And whereas you didn't have that opportunity with other cryptos that are out there. Exactly. And look, I'm not going, I'm the mindset coach. So y'all know me. Okay. I'm not about to go back and forth with y'all about a penny or half a penny worth of an investment because the people who we have to question about that are the same people who were mad when they didn't get into the Dogecoin play. Right. Because remember Dogecoin was at 0.000001. Right. And it didn't even hit. I knew somebody who when it hit 30 cent made over a hundred thousand dollars. Literally. You get what I'm saying? And the coin only went up to 70 cent people, right? So are you chasing things like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, which we're, I'm not saying or negating at all that those aren't solid coins. You have a lady right here that looks just like us, right? One of us doing great work in the community and she got a coin that is averaging about one cent. Get some, all right? Mm-hmm. And then you figure out the rest later and then you tag, you know, you tag her, you touch her as you look at this video. And you find out what she's doing, ask the information, but don't get left behind because we're no longer letting you get away with, they don't tell us, we right here. Mm -hmm. Tiffany, you go ahead and tell that person why they need to get invested in this, why they need to get started with you at this tax sale group. Well, um, first and foremost, um, 
the world is ever changing guys and we all know that we've experiencing it daily the world is ever changing and evolving and we have to learn how to evolve and change with it you understand so with that being the case like um like she stated about generational wealth generational wealth i hear a lot of people that throw that terminology around but what does it mean it means for generations after you so this is what we're putting in place for after we're gone from here. We're no longer here. We're setting up the play for generations after us. You understand? And that starts with ownership. You understand? That starts about being intentional and making sure that you're investing your money into um, avenues and revenue streams that's generating more money for you. You understand with purchasing tax liens and tax deeds, it give you put you in a position where you don't have to worry about a mortgage. There are 30 year mortgages, you understand? And so it's like being able to eliminate that one major expense for your children and your grandchildren will put them in a better position so that they're able to leverage their monies, their income to start investing in other um, in other revenue streams as well. You understand but the most the most important thing i try to explain to individuals is the fact that we have been trying to operate on an old outdated blueprint and that blueprint was oh graduate from high school go to college get a degree get a good job then you get your house and your car and your kids and you living good no that's not that that doesn't work for us right now you understand that math doesn't math for us because we need multiple streams of income. We need to change our, our mindset from consumers to producers. You understand? So that means that you have to intentionally go out there and get information that you was not taught in school. You understand? We have to be intentional. We have to make sure that we are not just making it because just making it has us all, all always trying to play catch up. You understand? So start investing in things that's going to generate in another revenue for you, another income for you, and use your money to start making money for you. Now, when you take your tax return, I tell everyone, go get, take that tax return to the tax sale. You can take that tax return and buy some of crypto. You understand? Because we know that that's going to generate more money. But taking your tax return to go get some Jordans or go get a flat outfit or go eat out for a good month, those are not assets that you don't have nothing to show for that. We have to change our mindsets because what we've been taught is not what it really is in order for us as a people to get ahead. But mm -hmm. that's why you should start following me. And don't follow me, join me. Join me at the tax sales online and in person. Join me at the tax sale and I'll show you how to get this real estate, show you how to bid on properties, show you where the properties you can get for little to nothing. You understand? But you have to start by taking action and be intentional. Exactly. And I love everything you said, especially with the so many plays on mindset, because he, here we are people, right? And what I do, and that's it. You just got to adopt the right winning mindset to realize that if you keep on that old path, right, that Tiffany broke down, you are going to be left behind because yes. it's great. Let's just think about it, right? At our parents' rate, right, let's just, let's just go on a little thought journey real quick. At our parents' level, high school education was good enough, right? It was sufficient. Look at some of our bosses. They don't have college degrees. They got high school and years of experience, right? But now look at our age group coming in. They have at least an undergrad, most are even coming in with a master's. So what does that mean for our children and then their children? What kind of doctorate degree are you gonna need to get a basic job? Because if you look on Indeed right now, right, people listening, if you go on Indeed right now and you look up a company and they talk about entry level, look at what they're requiring you to have to pay you the bare minimum. They want you to have an undergrad, sometimes even a master's, right? Speak a whole nother language to give you $15. No. I'm also, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> gosh, you're very correct. I know individuals that's working 20, 25 plus years and cannot retire because their retirement check, their social security, their 401 is not enough to sustain them for their actual living conditions. So when people retire, that social security check, 
the average Social Security check is $800 a month. A month. A month. You mm -hmm. understand? So they retire from their job once they finally decide to do it, then they still have to go get another job. You understand? Mm -hmm. So imagine working 25, 30 years and still can't be comfortable. Mm -hmm. You understand? The Social Security check is, is, is not going to cut it. You know meanwhile, I mean? look, meanwhile, somebody bought Dogecoin, spent about $100 for <laughs> a coin that wasn't even worth one cent. And within what six months, eight months tops, became a hundred thousand dollars richer, right? They didn't know what that coin meant. They don't know what it means today. But guess what? They took advantage of an opportunity because it was so small that it just made sense, right? Because we go blow a hundred dollars at Walmart gas station now, especially, right? So Tavanya, get with her, get you some guap coin. I'm gonna get me some guap coin. Right. You better get you some guap coin, right? Get I'm you a property dollars right now. That give me money. Get you a guap property for you for eighty one dollars <laughs> with ten minutes. I, we can't be more clear, people, because as I create this show and this platform for us to talk about serious situations that we go through, right on every level, family, relationship, personal, I have to bring to you all money because it's something that we do not do well enough right we don't right. talk about it with our children with our friends with our spouses and this is this is why we struggle on all facets compared to any other race because money is not the thing that's supposed to make you happy but it is the thing that drives everything right it puts you in certain positions when you attain it because you can utilize it the right way. We got to stop holding on to it and start using it as tools to leverage us in better spaces. And you have to connect with people who have the information and Correct. stop just waiting for them to tell you. You got to show up in place. You got to pull up, right? I pulled up in Clubhouse and I pulled up and Tobias probably didn't even know I was listening to her. This was like two years ago <laughs> before in the Clubhouse room. I'll never forget the first time I even got on Clubhouse, you were in there, it was Meek Mill and a couple other celebrities, and you were talking about this, and I'm just like, I don't know what they're saying, but I'm going to listen, right? And I started following you from day one. Who would think that two years later, I would meet you in person? I didn't even know you were in Atlanta. But this is what I'm saying, what happens when you get in a room and you just start listening, and then you start being active, and people know me, I'm active. That's what happened with Tiffany. Again, Clubhouse, right? He brought Clubhouse to reality, went to a tax sale, then met her for lunch with the group. And it's history ever since, right? We've been connected. We've done um, events together and things like that because I'm always going to challenge our people to get involved. Open up your mindset. Stop thinking you don't have enough money. You don't, you're not educated enough. You don't need a college degree to do any of this. You nope. don't need a background check to do none of this. You don't need a credit report to do. I'm talking about changing your life, your family's life, your kids, kids, kids' life, like they're talking about with generational wealth. So the only way to do that is if you tap in and you lock in and you get ready to start learning the power of investing over saving and challenging your mindset. This has been a great episode of Talk To Me Tuesday. Probably going to need a part two, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> but for that, also, yeah. go ahead. Tim, also, I, I do want to add something real quick. This is something that I had to learn when when you're starting to to get into different avenues like crypto, tax sales, everything, options trading, and all of that is the fact that stop seeking advice from those who are not qualified to answer that. Answer your questions because yeah. it's many a times there are people that I look up to that I go ask these questions. Say, hey, you think I should buy this lot of land for two hundred dollars? And it'd be like, why you want to buy a lot of land? That's not the person I need to be asking. I need to ask someone who's purchased land, who knows what to do with land, who, who how can make money off of land. You understand? So it's like you have to be mindful because a lot of people, whether intentional or not, they'll talk you out of things that they're not even aware of themselves as far as yeah. how to answer or instruct you or guide you how to go further with it. But I've I've had that had that mistake a lot so i just wanted to let people know. oh absolutely but over here right when you're working with me on this show we're talking about ties to mindset coach we get your mind set so we don't even deal with people who are trying to change your mind we don't even have them around 
We're telling you exactly what you need to do. We're pointing you in two directions right here. And if you can't find it, you come to me and I'll help you get connected. But this is what is necessary for us to change our lives and really get into that general generational wealth that we talk about so much. This is how you get started. So at the end of the night, this has been a great, great episode. I promise we'll bring back a, 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 two, a part two on it. Right, ladies? Um, but for that time being, have a good night. See you next Tuesday. Thank you.